We're very pleased to be joined by one of the newer members of the San Jose Sharks organization, goaltender Strauss Mann, who has signed this past spring, just participated in his first development camp with the Sharks. Strauss, first of all, how's it going? And thank you very much for the time. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, it's, it's going well um, here in the end of July and uh, going along with my, my summer training, trying to get better here. Just got back from, uh, from San Jose for the first time, which was a great week. And yeah, just uh, soaking in the summer a bit. Speaking of soaking in, what do you make of development camp, the facilities, the city, and just being immersed among the coaches and within the organization officially now? Yeah, it was great. It was a good experience uh, on many levels. Um, I'd been to one development camp in the past with the Islanders like three or four years ago, and it was definitely cool uh, to come back to one. Obviously, it's a little bit of a younger crowd, and I felt like a little bit more of uh, one of the vets or the older guys there, which is an interesting experience and and uh, something that was cool because I, I, I felt a lot more prepared for it and a lot more comfortable and knowing what to expect. And um just felt like I could kind of do my thing and uh, meet everyone and make some relationships and kind of get laid for the land so it was really fun uh they put together a great week obviously there was some uh some things going on in the transition of the organization which was definitely interesting to be there for and a good a good lesson learned to just kind of keep doing my job as things around around me are going on and um, but overall, a lot of great people there and a really cool city with some good weather. So that's nice. You mentioned the Islanders. I was looking at your hometown, Greenwich, Connecticut. You're kind of centrally located. I looked at Hartford about two hours away. You're even closer to New York City. And then, if I'm not mistaken, across the water would be Long Island. So what NHL team did you root for? The Whalers were already gone by the time you were born. But what NHL team did you root for growing up in Connecticut? Um, I actually grew up a big Rangers fan. That was kind of, for me, the the closest team, I guess. It's about Nestor and it's like an hour away, maybe. Uh, went to a lot of games. I was a big Lundquist fan growing up. So that was uh, that was my team. Still kind of is. It's a little bit weirder now that I, I'm around the age and of a lot of the guys and have played against a lot of them. So maybe a little bit different now. But, yeah, that was uh, that was my team. So what do you make of David Quinn, former Ranger coach, now taking over in San Jose with the Sharks? Yeah, it's definitely really cool. I, I also got the, the privilege to play for Coach Quinn twice this year uh, with USA, once at the Olympics and once at Worlds. So I've actually gotten to know him a little bit through those experiences. And, and he's a great guy, uh, great coach. I, I really, really like the hire for the organization. He's He'll do a great job and um, definitely a positive guy that, knows his stuff and has a great attention for detail on, on the little things, but also just lets guys play too. So um, I think it will be great for the organization in terms of where things are at and trying to kind of flip things around quickly. We'll jump into your career. We'll jump into, as you mentioned, the Olympics, the world championships, wearing the red, white, and blue this past year. I want to go all the way back though to where it started. You're a goaltender. There's always that moment in a hockey player's life when they choose whether they want to play up front or they want to play in the net. So tell us how it all came to be. How'd you end up strapping on the pads and fall in love with the position? Um, so I, I grew up my first, the first league I played in was kind of like a house league, nothing too stressful, just strapping on the skates, playing every Sunday. And uh, we would always switch off who the goalie was in that league. I was probably like eight years old, something like that. And, uh, there was one guy in the whole league though, that, that had his own pads and the whole setup and wanted to play goalie every week though. And I started to uh, get a little bit jealous of him. So I, I kept asking to play goalie and then, um, played a bunch that year. And then the next year, our goalie on our travel team, uh, first year of travel actually went down with an injury. So I, I just volunteered for the job and kind of stuck with it since and fell in love with the position pretty fast. So most kids, they like to score goals, but again, you've got to have somebody playing in the net. So what was it about goalie that attracted you to the position and made you want to play goal and eventually stick back there? Uh, it's a great question. I mean, I'd love to tap into the eight-year-old knee's mind and kind of really get a, a good glimpse. But I think overall, it was probably just like feeling pretty important, feeling like I had a, a say into, uh, into the game and probably made me feel appreciated a lot by my teammates. And uh, at that age, you just want to have fun and 
kind of be cool in school and like have everyone uh appreciate you and I think I felt pretty appreciated and I, I that kind of became my niche a, a bit as a as a young kid and since then I've definitely grown to love the game and the position for so many other reasons like obviously now that it's, it's there's a lot of pressure as a goalie especially um the higher level you get and I think with that pressure I've had to learn a lot about myself mentally and physically and uh, just there's so much adversity ups and downs and in the season over the course of a game as a hockey player, but especially as a goalie. And uh, I just love to kind of test myself in that way and to keep learning and growing. And that helps me as a player, but also a person. We're talking to Strauss man, sharks goaltending prospect going all the way back to when you first started playing hockey, falling in love with the sport. You mentioned Hendrik Lundqvist, you're a Rangers fan, easy decision to be a fan of Hendrik Lundqvist, but what about Hank? did you really like about his game? And did you try to pull some things from his game as you evolved in your career? Yeah, I think I for sure did. The number one thing that I loved was just his, his compete level. Like you could see it every night. He was just the hardest worker. Uh, the fans loved them. His teammates loved them. That was just something that probably implicitly I kind of uh, fell in love with and tried to emulate a bit in my game. And yeah, I, I still to this day, I, I try to not, um, pretend to be any one goalie or anything and try and take everything. I'm always trying to take bits and pieces, but for sure he had the biggest influence on, on me as a kid and was the guy I always watched growing up. So little things, I think I definitely took that. I probably don't even know whether how I play breakaways or things. Cause he was just the guy I watched every night. So I'm sure, uh, in that I'm sure there was a moment in your life where you, you kind of had a crossroads where you realize hockey is probably going to be the path I should take. Maybe you loved it more than other sports. You also realize that maybe you had a, a brighter future in hockey than other sports, but was there other sports that you played as a kid? Yeah, I kind of played uh, a lot of everything as a kid. I went to camp for a while and there, they would kind of force you to play everything and uh, I don't know, baseball, soccer, even a little basketball and tennis. But as soon as high school came around, I, I kind of stuck with hockey. It was just kind of the one for me that, always uh always was my passion and the one I wanted to really take on I don't know if it was always my best sport as a kid but it was the one I I loved the most so that that was enough for me to to kind of stick with that come high school time you are the son of Anthony and Sally man how have they been instrumental on your career and you as a person um oh in so many ways as a person um as a hockey player I mean none of them we're hockey players. My mom's from Louisiana. She barely knew what hockey was. And my dad didn't really ever touch the ice, but um, the biggest thing was they just always supported me and, and, and also kind of stayed out of my way a bit, like let me lead the ship. And I think that was really important. Uh, they forced me to kind of take incentive and take control. And I think sometimes a lot of parents want to want to so well for their kid that they, they get in the way a bit. My parents always made me um, step forward and 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 kind of yeah man the ship for myself and take incentive to talk to coaches and um, schedule practice, get up for myself in the morning before school to, to get to practice and um, not in a tough love way or anything. Just yeah, they stayed out of my way in a good way, but also were always there to support me and always uh, let me do what I needed to do to get to the next level, whether that be. Um, drive me to practices and far away or let me go to juniors after college uh, or after high school, even when I didn't have a, a commitment to a college. So um, they were, they were always there for me for sure. Okay. I, I remember this vividly when we first signed you and the Sharks first signed you, I saw the name Strauss man. I saw that you were coming from Sweden. I just assumed it was a European goaltender coming over. Nope. A Connecticut kid who played at Michigan, U uh, S born U S raised so give us the backstory on the name Strauss how did your parents settle on that name and, and was there any inspiration from where they got it uh yeah so Strauss was my grandmother's maiden name she had all sisters so the name was gonna kind of fade after her generation my parents I guess wanted it to stick around for a little bit longer so they gave it to me as a first name uh but yeah that's the story and definitely people I think often especially in hockey because there is so much uh so many european players they they definitely think i'm gonna be european or something but no just an american guy that played a year in sweden 
So when did you realize in your career that I'm pretty good and there's an opportunity, maybe I could play at the next level, maybe college, maybe major, major junior, in your case, you end up going to the US, USHL. But when did you realize that I'm pretty good at this and I have a chance maybe to play at a higher level? Yeah, so I have a little bit of a unique story in, in that um, I didn't commit till I was 19 years old. And uh, even then, it wasn't full ride off or anything like that. I, I was a bit of a late bloomer, you could call me. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I had some people that believed in me, like goalie coaches and other people that kind of pushed me to see that I, I could could do something special if I kept working hard. But it really wasn't until my senior year in high school when I was like 18 years old. This is after my first draft eligible year, probably that I really got any time at the high school level and then um, made the most of my time and started to see that I could play at a high level. But in no way was I thinking pro or I, I, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't being college a little bit, but it really was like step by step, just trying to get to the next level. It was trying to start and do well on the high school level. And then once that happened, I was just trying to make a good junior team. And once I got to the USHL, I wanted to commit to the college and, and, and so on. And for me, it's always just been about been, uh, or been about uh, dominating just at the level I've been at and showing to everyone that I can keep progressing. Um, so yeah, I've never gotten too far ahead in, in that way. And never as a kid was I like, Oh, I'll definitely go to the NHL or anything, but, I just kind of kept believing in my process and that kind of took me where it needed to. So you went to prep high school in Connecticut. Tell us a little bit about the prep hockey experience. And then you alluded to being a late bloomer, undrafted, a late commitment to Michigan. So how did it all come to be that you end up landing with the Fargo force in the USHL? Walk us through that process as well. Yeah. So, um, I went to prep school in Connecticut, actually in my hometown. Most of these schools are boarding schools where guys go and live there, live away from home. But um, ours, Brunswick, was one of the only ones that it's usually just a day school. And occasionally guys come from a little bit further away and maybe stay during the week. But everyone, for the most part, is from this area. But the cool thing is we get to play in a great league against great schools like Salisbury, Avon, um, schools that have produced a lot of great players in college and professionally. Uh, so yeah, that was a great experience for me. I had to wait a while. Uh, there were a couple of goalies ahead of me. And so it really wasn't until my senior year and almost repeat senior year, if you want to call it, like I was 18 as a senior. So I was old when I first got my first opportunity to, to start and play the majority of the season. So um, I did that and had a good year out there, played split season because the season's only December through February, maybe early March. And so played earlier in the year with a team called Mid Fairfield. We ended up going to nationals in the spring, qualified for it at the end of the fall and um, played it in, in nationals in April, ended up winning it. And from there, I got a couple USHL tryouts. I went to Muskegon, got cut and then went to Fargo a couple weeks later and ended up making it out of camp undrafted. Uh, so that was a huge moment for me just because the USHL is such a great league, especially for goalies. And yeah, then I just came into to camp. Um, training camp the next fall and just battle as hard as I could. And I don't know if I, it was pretty the whole time, but when I got my opportunities in games, I, I showed well and stuck there and then eventually got a commitment to, to Michigan, which was my dream school and the school that I was kind of seeking out uh, as soon as I got to the USHL. So that one season in the USHL, you're competing for a starting role and I'm sure there was some trepidation because of the leap from high school to that league and knowing the history of, of goaltenders that have gone through that league and gone on to college, but you go 11 and three in the postseason. you guys end up winning a Clark cup championship. What a tremendous year. What a tremendous two years for you. If you combine high school and then that one season of junior, but when did it click in the USHL that all of a sudden, your game was translating and you felt like you could really compete at that level? Um, I think, uh, honestly, for me and juniors, it was just about getting enough games under my belt where I, I got some results and I started to feel like, okay, like I'm, I'm at this level, I can do it. Because you see all these drafted guys there, you see college commits, these big name schools, and I just come off one year of high school hockey and there's a little bit of that feeling of like, who am I to to be amongst this group. But 
uh, results don't lie. And once you start to kind of put those, those games together and maybe it was 10, 15 games into the year and I had good numbers, a lot of wins and was feeling good. And I was like, okay, I, I belong here. Um, and then after that, it was, it was just about continuing to gain that confidence. And for me, I, I committed to Michigan by end of November, maybe early December, but there was still a lot up at stake in terms of like, when was I going to go into school? What kind of goalie was I going to be on their radar when I got to Michigan at one, two, three. Um, so there was still a lot to prove and a lot to, to kind of do that year and, and improve on. And obviously then we had a chance to win a championship, which we did. And that was a great experience in itself and one that I still uh, lean on a lot to this day. Michigan, you said was a dream school. And I'm sure once the opportunity presented itself, it sounds like you jumped at it committing in November. Were there any other schools in the mix or was it a situation that once Michigan came aboard, you said, where do I sign? Uh, the latter pretty much, but it was uh, a couple other schools that, that reached out and, um, offered and then raise I had a couple offers I kind of had Michigan in the back of my mind so I had I didn't even have an agent or advisor or anything at the time so I had my goalie coach reach out to Michigan see if they needed a goalie and they they said they'd watch and we it was funny we had a game at NTDP in Plymouth um, not too long after and I played against the U18s and had one of the best games of, of my season and they were there so they offered me the next day and I signed for that day so that's kind of how it went. So you land on campus at Michigan and that first year you play a little bit sparingly splitting duties and then you really take over in year number two. But the first experience at Michigan, what do you make of being in college, playing in the Big Ten, realizing and fulfilling your, your college dream? What was that like when you first got there? Um, it was unreal. It was something I had dreamed about forever. And honestly, at certain times in my life especially in high school probably thought it wasn't even possible so to get there and uh, get to Yoast and just be a part of that and just be in such an amazing school with such a great school spirit such great academics like the classes you would go to were so so cool and learned so much from those it was just an amazing experience uh, that freshman year was tough in a lot of ways like our team didn't live up to expectations and a lot of emotional roller coasters starting a bunch of games in a row and then sitting a bunch and never really taken over the job and uh, not feeling like I was really performing to the best of my abilities, but just so much I learned from that first year and um, so many great relationships I made with guys that I'm still so close with today as well. Looking at a little bit of your bio, an impressive student as well. I believe you were a business major at Michigan, but beyond just going to classes and being a student athlete, you really excelled in the classroom as well. Being good in school, is that something that was really important to you? Have you always been interested in the academic side of it as well, beyond just being strictly a hockey player? Yeah, I mean, like you you mentioned before, my parents have kind of instilled that in me since a young age. Academics in my house has always been um, a huge deal. And my sisters, I have three of them, they've all done really well in, in school. And so they kind of um, led the way in that aspect and, and that drove me to do well. And I've never seen myself as just a hockey player. Like I've always, um, taking a lot of pride in growing in all aspects of my life. And uh, so going to a school like that, I thought it'd be a shame to really not give it my all in every aspect because you get to leave with such a great education and uh, so many great professors. There so many great class options. So I'm a competitive person. So I also want to get good grades. I want to get good numbers. I want to win. I, so it, it kind of translates everywhere in life for me, but um, yeah, it was, it was cool to, to be there and, to also feel like you were valued to to get good grades, not only how you did on the ice, but there were there were things you could get acknowledged for in the classroom too. So that was that was nice to to get a little bit of that as well. We see it very often at the professional level, and for me, I see it all the time in the AHL. You see a player make a huge leap from their rookie season to their second year. Everything slows down. You understand the league and the speed and the opponent and the systems and all these different things. The same thing happened for you in college. You go from a year that you just said your freshman year, it was up and down, maybe not playing at the level that you hoped for. And then year number two, you're the big 10 goaltender of the year. You're a, a finalist for the Mike Richter award, which I'm sure was kind of a thrill being a Rangers fan as a kid, but what kind of came together for you in year number two? Um, wasn't one thing, uh, but it was, it was a lot of things that kind of came together. First of all, like I had a lot of people, in my corner that were helping me along the way that 
And I mean, it sounds like a cliche, but really like people that were there and um, helped me grow my game and add new things to my game and throw out ideas there that maybe it took a bad year, freshman year for me to really process and, and learn from. So uh, yeah, at the time it felt devastating that I had that year and that our team had that year. But in retrospect, it was a great opportunity for me to to learn a bit. I kind of thought I had it figured out my game um, the way I wanted it from juniors because I had had those two great years in a row. And I almost felt like I was indestructible and it would just keep translating. But it was a good, good humility, um, humbling lesson, you could call it. And uh, I definitely started to take different things, uh, um, try different things in my game, try different things mentally. And it just came together a little bit that year. And of course, as you have uh, good games, you gain a little bit of confidence and your team gains confidence. You you gain confidence in them. And it was just a great year all around for our team as well. Unfortunately, COVID ended it earlier than, than we would have liked to in, in the playoffs. But um, it, was, it was a really special year for sure. I want to go to your final season, your junior year. You were one of the captains. In fact, you wore a C on your sweater at times. What was that like? Very rare for a goaltender to, to be given that type of an opportunity, but I'm sure that was quite the thrill being that that ended up being your last year. What it mean to, to be part of the, the captain group, though, uh, your final season of college? Yeah, it was uh, the biggest honor I've ever had in my life, to be honest. Uh, to go to Michigan at all was such a dream. And then to wear a C on my jersey as a goalie, and my, it, was, it was something I probably never could have thought was possible. Uh, but it was, it was a huge honor, but also a, a, a huge challenge. Um, we had a lot of young players that year, a lot of first round picks. Uh, I think the year after my junior year, we, Michigan had like number one, number two, number three, number four in the draft. So, and they weren't the only first rounders. So there's a lot of talent on that team. And as uh, uh, people in the game know, that can be great, but it's also tough to get that to all mesh and, I was only a junior and someone that just a year ago was an underclassman. So it was a tough transition, especially because COVID came along and we were getting tested every day, had to stay out of party, stay in our houses and, and, and really do what was right in, in a lot of aspects there. So uh, trying to manage all that and do it in a way that I wasn't always trying to be the bad guy was hard and to still focus on my game at the same time was also an even bigger challenge. But uh, I'm not going to say I did everything perfectly, but I, I really gave it my all. And it, it took a lot of energy and uh, learned a ton from that experience. You talked about how many first round draft picks, almost unheard of how many number one picks were on that team at one point, including second rounder, the Sharks, Thomas Bordolo was on your team as well. And then of course, Owen Power, Matty Beneers, you go down the list of first rounders. Give us a scouting report on some of these guys. What was it like to be in practice on, on a day-to-day basis and take a, a few shots from some of these top prospects? Oh, it was amazing. I mean, I think all of us, not only the goalies, but we all grew so much because you're going against some of the guys that will be top players in the NHL for the next 10, 20 years and every day in practice. And it just pushed every one of us, whether you were a first round or second round or undrafted or guy that basically – never, never, uh, played in the game. Everyone was just getting better. Everyone was getting pushed from each other. And, um, and also off the ice, like a lot of these kids, they're just 17, 18 years old, talk about Kent Johnson and no one power and go down the list, but they're just so driven off the ice too, because they know that's going to be their life and, and they want to get every advantage they can. So to be kind of, a I don't know, a, a veteran in that locker room, if you want to call that at 22 a veteran, but uh, just to give all the advice I had at that point and to learn stuff from them as well was awesome. These kids were so driven, like every day we'd be, we'd be at the rink for two hours after just talking or stretching or lifting or whatever it was. And obviously there wasn't a lot to do being the COVID year, but it was, uh, it was an experience we all grew a lot from. Talking to Thomas following his final season of college, he talked about how close the group was and it, it's pretty evident just hearing you speak of how close knit the group was beyond just the star power, a really tight knit group as well. It got very close to, to capturing a national championship. Obviously the year uh, you were there uh, influenced as well by COVID, but, uh, but this past year, the, the year you departed a very loaded team as well. I want to talk about your decision to go to Sweden and a very unique one at that. You're an undrafted player. You're trying to get to the next level. You still have eligibility. There are other goaltenders on the roster. So 
what led to that decision? And then how do you land in Sweden in one of the premier leagues in Europe in the SHL? How'd that all come to be? Uh, yeah, definitely really unique and wouldn't say I scripted it up exactly how it ended up going, but uh, I just kind of decided it was time to move on for a bunch of reasons. And um, yeah, it was, uh, it was interesting how Sweden came about. I, I knew I wanted to go pro because I felt like I had two great years at that point. And uh, even though it was super disappointing to not get to finish at Michigan and get knocked out by COVID two years in a row, uh, life still moves on. And I still realized after talking to my agents and my family that I have a, a career that hopefully will go on a lot longer than college. And um, I knew they would have a great team regardless the next year. Uh, so, and have a great chance with Eric and, and Nat, who's an amazing goal as well. So I knew I was going pro and then with COVID and also just being undersized guy who has to always prove himself a little bit extra than, than uh, maybe the, the taller guys or the drafted guys. I, I didn't end up getting an NHL offer that summer. Um, and I could have waited a little bit longer till August to see if something opened up, but there weren't a lot of contracts being given out last year to free agents. And I had this um, opportunity in Sweden that kind of came out of nowhere, a mutual friend um, knew a coach and it's a, I just knew a lot about Sweden because of Henrik Lundqvist, honestly, and knew it was a great league. And the more I learned about this team, knew it was a great spot with, uh, great development track record of, of winning. So uh, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to go out there and play at a great in a great league and try and prove myself at a different level instead of going back to college and um, maybe just proving it again for a third year. And I think it hopefully paid off. And obviously I got an amazing opportunity at the Olympics because of it that again, I couldn't have scripted it up, but it, it ended up all working out as life usually does. I want to talk about the Olympics in just a moment, but when you're in Sweden and, and correct me if I'm butchering the name of it, because some of these teams over in the SHL could be a little bit difficult to say, but Shelatea, yeah. I believe is how you say it. And it's, was it close? It's close. I, I usually say it's Haleftio, but it's per, or, but it's spelled like Skeleftia. Exactly. Skeleftia. Okay. Yeah, All right. yeah. Well, we'll, tr we'll try to get it when we, we talk I've about it. I've heard it pronounced like four ways, you know, when I <laughs> So. Okay, fair, fair. You had a couple of Shark connections, though, on that team. Melko Carlson, fan favorite of the Sharks, played a handful of years in San Jose, was one of your teammates. And then there was another one, Linus Carlson, who was a draft pick and then was eventually traded to Vancouver. I may be missing uh, somebody else, but a couple of Sharks connections. Did you rely on their experiences at all when making your decision to sign in San Jose? Um, I, I don't know if I did or didn't. I definitely talked to him a little bit and Melker was a, he's a great guy. And, um, Linus didn't, he was drafted there, but obviously didn't spend any time there. And I was actually locker mates, if you want to call it with Melker, we we're sitting right next to each other all year and he's the best. And I, I knew he was kind of a fan favorite and played a bunch of years there. So he only had th good things to say. And, um, for me, I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into where you want to sign. And also at the end of the day, you sign somewhere and, you kind of throw it all away and just go out and play because so much changes um, every year and it's pro and that's how it works. Um, but yeah, I definitely got a lot of um, good, good stuff from him. And he said, there's a lot of great stuff about the city and the fans and, and the people in the organization, which was kind of all I needed to hear to, to give me the green light where it was a place if all the other stuff um, was there, that it'd be a good place to sign. Did you pick up any Swedish and were there any food items that you really became a big fan of during your, your year overseas? Um, very little Swedish. We actually had a, a good amount of imports on our team. So what that meant is that we would speak English in the locker room or the coaches would. So I didn't really need to pick up a lot, obviously words here and there and phrases, uh, but not enough to speak fluently after nine, nine months or whatever it was. And, uh, yeah, the, the, the food, the food was pretty simple there. I'm, I'm a big, uh, nutrition nerd. So I I've been doing my, my diet paleo ish diet for like seven years now trying to eat all natural. And I was a little bit nervous going out there cause I didn't know what the ingredients were of everything. Brand new language. Thank, thank God for Google translate. But, uh, overall it was great. Cause it's just honestly, everything's pretty simple there. Pretty much meat and potatoes and, uh, can't go wrong there. So 
trying to follow this paleo diet, does that force you to cook a lot? And have you become a pretty good cook? Yeah, I don't know if I'm cooking gourmet meals or anything, but I, I definitely know my way around the kitchen and um, can make the stuff I need to make. But yeah, I definitely cook a lot. It's it's obviously a lot healthier to cook on your own because you know everything that's going into your food and can control control everything there. But also in in as a hockey player, you're not gonna be able to control everything. You go on the road and you're in airports and and all this. So um, just trying to always do the best I can. It's something I have an interest in outside of the game too. So something I, I, I like learning about and um, yeah, it helps you on the ice as well, staying in the best shape and feeling as good as you can. We're talking to Shrouds Band Sharks goaltending prospect. One of the big transitions for Swedish players coming to the U.S. or North America is the downsize uh, of the rink size. You're going from a larger international size to a smaller uh, rink here in, in the U.S. and up in Canada. You had a little bit of an experience, though, with the bigger rink. I know some of the colleges have it, Minnesota, and I believe Wisconsin, both are on the larger sheets, if I'm not mistaken. So did that help your transition going the other way, going over to Europe, going onto the larger sheet? Because I know things are altered in terms of maybe the congestion in front of the net and just the way the game is played a little bit. Yeah, it's honestly, it's a super different game in a lot of ways. Um, guys have more time with the puck. It's, it's a little bit slower in that way people there's a lot more deception because of that time with the puck and we're in the smaller ice it's pretty bang bang like guys on and off their stick quick shots not as much time to maybe fake and um, look for the backdoor options but it was I, I don't know how much the olympic size rinks in college helped obviously it helped in terms of in college i had to make transitions week to week from playing at home game then maybe minnesota the next so i really had to be like okay here are my angles and all that um but also when we played those games, we were playing a North American style where Swedes have been playing on this big ice their whole life. They, they honestly play a little bit differently. The systems are different. Um, so yeah, it was, it was different. And I didn't get as many shots in the games because guys are kind of looking for that, that perfect opportunity instead of just throwing stuff at the net and, and uh, trying to bang at home. But I think it was huge for my growth as a player. Uh, if I played a bunch of years there, maybe I'd get some bad habits that, uh, wouldn't be great if I was coming back over and trying to play on NHL ice again, but to add some things to my game from that and then come back to see a year later, I think will really benefit me. And uh, it was also cool to, to go to China. We actually weirdly played on NHL ice at the Olympics, not Olympic ice at the Olympics, but um, to kind of go straight from Sweden to the NHL ice and then back to Sweden really got a glimpse into how different things are with that directive, a switch instead of playing in Sweden all year. And then over the summer, just forgetting what that's like. So I definitely um, identified some of those areas of the game that were different directly then. So you represented the U S at the Olympics and at the world championships and could be your future coach. And John McCarthy did something very similar in the prior Olympics as a non NHL contracted player. He was able to go over and play for team USA. You were in the same boat, not under an NHL deal. They didn't send the NHL players so how did the opportunity come to be? When did you find out that you were in the running? And then how did it come to be in which you ended up playing for Team USA at the Olympics? Um, yeah, it was uh, all the way back in the summer that for the first time maybe I was hearing there were going to be issues with the NHL going or that things weren't finalized there. And just knowing that I was going to be in Europe and not under NHL contract, I, it was kind of in the back of my mind since then, just like, okay, it's another thing that if I do well, I might have a chance at. and especially I knew they'd be looking at some college guys and if I had done well in college and then also in, in Europe, I feel like I would have a good resume for that. But uh, obviously the NHL then was supposed to go. And then again, they weren't in December. So when they weren't, uh, I, it was in the back of my mind because I had, I had a solid start to the year and, and knew maybe if the NHL wasn't going to go, I, I would have a good chance, but didn't want to get my hopes up too much because yeah, uh, that stuff's kind of out of your control. And when you've played pro hockey, you learn pretty quickly to let go of the stuff that's out of your control or else it'll drive you nuts all the time. Um, but I think it was early January that I got the text that I was uh, going to be invited to the team. And it was a no brainer to, to go. It's, it was such an honor and just something like I never even knew to dream of growing up. Obviously, you think you need to go to the NHL first to represent USA in the Olympics and be one of the top USA players. But to have that that opportunity before even playing an NHL game was so special and so special to my family. And 
just all these people that supported me and helped me get to where I was today or am today. It's, it was, it was cool to see how much it meant to all those people, especially because it's the Olympics and you don't have to be a hockey person to be into that. Just people from all over uh, can kind of relate to, to uh, rooting on team USA. You almost forget how down to the wire it was. NHL players were scheduled to go and then all of a sudden that, that flare up of COVID kind of impacted how the NHL wanted to navigate. They eventually don't send the players and all of a sudden an opportunity opens up, but what a tremendous uh, experience. I'm sure something you'll, you'll never forget. I want to talk quickly before I do let you go. I got a couple more for you. Evgeny Dabakov, you had a chance to work with him. You talked about yourself, undersized goalie. He was the same, carved out a great long career. In fact, arguably the greatest goalie in Sharks franchise history. You get to work with him. You had your first real chance to get on the ice with him to, with development camp. What were your first impressions of a Navi and what have the interactions been like so far with him as a coach? Um, it's been awesome. He's, he's great. Everyone has nothing but great things to say about Navi. He's someone that keeps it light, which is huge. And a goalie coach you're going to be with every day to just have a positive attitude and um, keep things in perspective. But with that being said, he's, he's got a great mind for the game. And in a lot of ways, he, he was where I was at a lot, a, a while ago and obviously played an amazing career and had a, a great career in the NHL. And, uh, just to be able to learn from him and his experiences, but also the way he sees the game and is, is great. And I, I definitely picked up on that right away as I got to camp. We, we were um, in the video room and on the ice and just seeing eye to eye on a lot of things and having some good conversations about things. Maybe we disagree on a little bit, but um, that's huge, too, to have a little bit of uh, I don't want to call it conflict, but just things you you don't see exactly eye to eye on, but both people are, are able to see the other perspective and then work to a solution. So I think that's something I've been fortunate enough to have with a lot of goalie coaches where there's no ego there and we can both grow together and everyone wants the same thing at the end of the day. And he's definitely um, exactly like that and just wants what's best for the goalies in, in San Jose and the goalies he coaches. So I'm really excited for the opportunity to get to work with him more and um, yeah, he, he was also one of the reasons I, I really love San Jose when I was looking at where to sign. Okay, I got a two-parter before I let you go. It's a little bit less hockey-related, allow fans to, to know you as a person. What's something you like to do when you're not thinking or playing hockey? And who's your favorite non-hockey athlete of all time? Um, things I like to do when I'm not thinking or playing hockey. I've realized lately, especially this summer, it's hard to get my mind off hockey. Sometimes I was like, I had a baseball game last night watching my video from practice and all my friends were chirping me, but um, something I got to work on, I guess, get away from the game a little more, but I, I love to go to the lake and just get away a um, bit of a spiritual person, like to meditate. I think it helps me on the ice too, just slowing my mind down and um, yeah, getting that stillness and it's huge when you're in that and, and you're alone there and, and you got to really just stay even keeled. So I like that kind of stuff. And, um yeah I, I like wake surfing we have a boat um at, at our lake cabin and it's been a lot of fun to do that and uh be out in nature in that way and uh favorite non-hockey player athlete was that the question yes that, that would be tom brady which i was not a pats fan growing up even though i'm a new englander um but I've just grown to love him through the Michigan thing. I feel like in a lot of ways we have similar stories from upbringing. Uh, I won't say that I've won the seven Super Bowls or whatever, but uh, we have the same middle name, both had three sisters. I like to think that we, that we both went to Michigan and kind of uh, went to Michigan, not as the number one recruiter or anything, but paved our way there. And so I, I definitely love him and I've been watching the documentary on him, man, in the arena lately. And it's been pretty inspiring just to, to know where he came from and that everyone sees Tom Brady today, but they, they don't know kind of what went into it and, and all the bounces and um, little, little things that kind of he had to get over the hump with to get to just the next step. And then after a while that compounded into an amazing career. So uh, I'm pretty inspired by him. Well, you grew up on the, the right coast. He grew up here on the, on the left coast yeah. a Northern California guy. And you've got the Michigan connection. I think that's a, a pretty good non-hockey athlete to, to idolize. Uh, he'll be 45 this year. Can't believe uh, he's still uh, playing, especially at such a high level. But uh, Strauss, man, we, we can't thank you enough for the time. It was nice to meet you in person during develop camp. It was fun watching you. 
I don't think he allowed a goal in the three on three tournament. So that was a nice little start to your, your sharks tenure, but uh, we look forward to seeing you in training camp. Enjoy the rest of your summer. And uh, we thank you again for the time. Thank you so much. Um, really appreciate you having me on. I'm excited to get, to get out to San Jose and um, help the organization get better. Cause that's what it's all about right now in, in the Bay area.